Okay, I have to put all these books away. No one told me about this part of booktube. What's up everyone? My name is Kelsey. Welcome back to my channel. Today is my birthday. Actually, technically it's the day before my birthday, but if you're watching this the day it goes up, it's my birthday. I am 30 years old today. I'm actually very excited. I went through a little period of uh, fear and <laughs> crisis but now I'm feeling good probably because I'm just a birthday person I love my birthday I like to celebrate I like to go out and I like to have celebratory cake and I just think it's a good time I'm definitely a birthday month kind of person birthday week I celebrate for more than a day there was an article last year a couple years ago like some bitter person being angry at people who liked their birthday and saying they needed to grow up and I think that person needs to get over it. <laughs> so for my birthday, this is like a random special video for no reason where I talk about 30 books for 30 years. Um, these aren't really favorite books. They're just memorable books, books that, you know, affected me throughout my life. They're not in any particular order. And there are a few series in here. So each series I'm only counting as one book. Otherwise this would just be like half Victoria Schwab. I'm also, there's no way I'm gonna be able to do synopses for all of these just because like I have 30 books here. Even if I spend less than a minute or a minute exactly on each of them, that's gonna be more than a 30 minute video and that's too much. So I'm just gonna say like what I love about them or why they affected me in my life or why they were so memorable to me. And this is just like for fun, like a get to know me a little bit. I'm drinking a beer right now. I haven't had this before. It's from Highland Brewing. I did some hiking in North Carolina for my birthday. It was really beautiful and we got some takeout from breweries because this is happening during COVID if you're watching it later, but it was a good time. Beautiful hikes, a little frightening, lots of mountains. This is okay. It's a Pilsner. It's like, it's inoffensive and not super memorable. All right, I put these in order in a list to kind of mix it up so that the last 10 books aren't just the last 10 books I've read and they're all on the floor. So first I have, of course this one is at the bottom, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I read this a couple years ago. It's a five-star book. It's one of my favorite books ever. <laughs> I reread it every so often. I just love the way Emily St. John Mandel writes and I love the way, like this is a multi-perspective story and all of the stories, all of the past and futures of all of the characters kind of weave together and you're slowly uncovering it as you read. And this is set in like a post-apocalyptic world after a virus has wiped out most of humanity and people are just surviving now or more than surviving because one of our main characters is traveling around with a group of Shakespearean performers, just going from settlement to settlement. And like the events, the setting of the book is so big, but all of the stories feel so small and personal. I just love that about it. Next is, oh, I don't have a physical copy of this. Real Queer America, LGBT Stories from Red States by Samantha Allen. This is a nonfiction book uh, that Samantha Allen wrote about red states. So basically it follows her on a road trip through the Southern US where she stops in communities in red states and talks to the queer people that live there and how they make a place for themselves in, in a location that is not always super welcoming, but these are also places that, you know, super liberal areas tend to write off. And that's so interesting to me because there is nowhere there's nowhere in the United States where queer people aren't. We're everywhere. So the idea that, and this book really brought it home for me, that there won't be someone like you somewhere is kind of absurd. And I found it really comforting that people like me are everywhere, even in places where you wouldn't imagine it. And I do have plans to move <laughs> someday. So it was really comforting to see these communities in all these different places and it's like, a very comforting way of looking at, you know, a new place to live. All right, next is another one I don't have a physical copy of, The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This is an adult high fantasy. One of the first truly high fantasies I read and enjoyed, I think. Most of the fantasy I read is sort of based in the real world. Uh, this is a totally new, fabricated, from scratch world, and really the best part about it is the world building. 
and the way N.K. Jemisin sort of, you know, builds everything up. Some people say it's confusing. I thought it just felt really genuine and organic the way you learn about this world a little bit at a, at a time and all of the characters are sort of giving you a little bit of insight into the different parts of the world and the twist in this book is just mind-blowing like so good okay next i have watchers by dean Koontz. this is one of the first adult books i ever read i think i read it in the third grade and it's an adult thriller with like a romance subplot and it's about this government facility that created these monsters so there's like a monster and there's this genius golden retriever okay and this man comes across this golden retriever in the woods and it saves him from this monster and they form a bond and so on and so on so this one is memorable because it's the first adult book I ever read and I just adored it. I haven't read it in years. I do have plans to reread it. I'm a little worried because it's a 90s book written by a man. So I imagine the sexism is going to be rough. But, you know, I just, you know, dogs and books and genius dogs, what's not to love? Next is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is a new adult, adult romance about a love story. Look, I said I wasn't gonna do synopsis and I'm doing them. Anyways, I love this book because of the romance. It's very sweet. The book is fucking hilarious. This is exactly my kind of humor. I found the main character, Alex, super relatable and that's probably gonna be a theme throughout this list, characters I can relate to. There are gnats in my house and I just, they're driving me crazy. <sighs> Anyways, adored this romance, adored the humor, adored all of these moments. Also, this this book like took off. It was on the bestseller list, which is amazing. And it's so happy. And frequently queer books that make it on the New York Times bestseller list are tragic. <laughs> so I really liked from a, you know, social standpoint that this book made it. And also all the fan art, you know, when the artists get into the fandom, that's when we thrive. Okay, next is a little throwback. Where are you? Oh no, I forgot to get this one. Should I just, yeah, I'm not gonna get up. It's Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. This is a children's poetry book. Shel Silverstein is very famous for his poetry. It's, it's absurd and wacky and fun and funny. And I loved it when I was a child. And my sister and I would read these together all the time. And I would read them to my brother and just have a bunch of good memories attached to them. All right, next is, uh, did I get this one? I did not prep for this very well. I didn't get it, but oh well, I'm reading the sequel. I'm gonna hold up the sequel. It's The Poppy War <laughs> by R.F. Kwan. I am actually only like 5% into the Dragon Republic, but The Poppy War is on this list because, well, it's just really fucking good. It's really good. And it's one of the, uh, are really probably the only war based fantasy I've enjoyed or even finished. I think everyone I've tried to start, I, I didn't like it at all. They were way too focused on the politics and major movements of the war than the people. And I don't care for that. So the Poppy War, while the war part is important, the characters are more important. And I love that Rin, the main character is a woman and she is super fucked up, like making terrible decisions all the time bad at everything, terrible at communicating with other people, and this book just like gives her room to be a complete fuck up, and it's fine. Okay, I guess I'll put this in the stack. Next is, okay, this one's a little embarrassing. I hope you're ready. It's called A Knight in Shining Armor by Jude Devereaux. This is an adult historical romance, all right? I went through a very intense period of historical romances when I was maybe a freshman in high school, and this one, I stayed up really late finishing and I bawled my fucking eyes out. Like, I sobbed at the end of this book. I don't know why it got to me so much, but it did. And I never reread it and I probably never will because I found it so devastating. <laughs> but, man, I loved it. It is, I do want to say a little bit about what this one is about because it's so absurd. <laughs> So it's about this woman who is on a like an exotic European vacation with her very rich boyfriend and he dumps her or she dumps him at this historic graveyard and then this 
knight appears out of nowhere and it turns out this knight is from the past the 1500s and she it like takes care of him while he's in the future and then she ends up going to the past and it's a romance they fall in love but he gets left behind and she comes back to the future and this is totally spoilers for this whole book so if you want to read this <laughs> skip ahead but you know as she's like devastated and mourning the loss of you know her her the low of her life she sees someone who looks just like him on the train and she starts talking to him and they have so much in common and it's like a reincarnation of him and it was just like man it fucked me up so bad i spent a lot of time talking about that one all right next is vicious and vengeful the villains duology by v.e schwab i love this book vengeful wasn't as good but i really love vicious and honestly it functions as a standalone if you don't want to read on but i just love this take on the superheroes superpowers not meaning superheroes and this is like i don't know both the main characters are both bad guys and there's sort of this play of public perception versus like actual intention and the character you root for isn't the good guy but the character he's going after seems like the hero and there's that like tension between the two also victor is uh, ace and one of the first ace characters i ever read in adult in an adult book it's not on page until the second book but it is it is subtextual in the first book i just really love it okay next is this is my channel so you should know what's coming the last son and the hanged man by katie edwards this is an adult fantasy urban fantasy series and it's really hard to pinpoint a reason i love this so much i did a whole video on it you should watch it and then you should read this book but probably it's the characters okay so we're reading from one perspective and that's just rune's perspective but all of these side characters and like all of the characters they meet are so real and so likable even if there are characteristics you don't like the characters themselves are likable you root for them you want them to be happy you want them to be a family together my this is also super queer like everyone is queer it's a very queer world it's a it's a generally poly society there are multiple partner marriages etc and my favorite character so far is Quinn who is a teenager and he's ace and I just love him there's this line in the first book because Quinn can see the future that's not a spoiler he's a seer um, where he accidentally sees like some kind of makeout session happening in the shower and he's like that's not what showers are for and I'm like yeah I feel that <laughs> okay next is we're taking it back and we're getting a little emo guys the Polar Express by Chris Van Allsburg, and particularly this copy, which is super fucked up. It's got tears, it's got rips all over the bottom. Even the inside is torn. But I got this book when I was really young from my grandparents, and we read it together every Christmas. And the inside is signed by my grandma. It says from grandma and grandpa. My grandma wrote this. And my grandparents passed away both of them have so this book i like i treasure it <laughs> and i do love the story and the illustrations are beautiful but really it's the sentimental value for this one dust on everything in this house all right next is felix ever after by casing calendar this is another one i did a whole video on i shouldn't talk about these too much okay this is a recent read first of all just generally in a societal context i adore that there is a young adult contemporary romance novel about a trans queer teen just i love that also this cover is stunning also i just love felix and the way he he is queer and trans and he knows that about himself but he's still questioning his identity and what it means for him and i just love seeing that on page especially in young adult books next is how long have i been filming 15 minutes are we halfway not quite. All right, we're picking this up. Next is, and I'm keeping this all as one selection, The Raven Cycle and Called on the Hawk by Maggie Seafodder. 
and I'm holding up Call Down the Hawk because the Raven Boys covers are hideous. I hate them so much and there's a reason I have them all in paperback. They're ugly and I don't want to pay for them. Actually, this is I don't even like this cover, honestly. All of her covers, I just think they're ugly. I don't understand how a best-selling author has covers. Anyways, I love these books and I just spent a minute talking about how ugly the covers are. So, this series, these books, are one of the first books I read. I guess this one, not really. But The Raven Cycle, first series I read because, solely because of booktube, and I'm pretty sure it was CC at Problems of a Book Nerd who finally convinced me to read it. And to be honest, I read the first book and I was like, eh, I don't get it. I don't get the hype. <laughs> and then I read the second and the third book and I was like, hmm, it's fine. And then I even, the last book, I waited for the paperback to release because I didn't want to buy the hardcover. And that's when I finally fell in love with the series and I was like, wow, I would die <laughs> for all of these characters. And then I reread the series and it was like, I picked up on so much more the second time around. Let me tell you about how bad I was at my gaydar because I didn't even know Ronan was gay. <laughs> even though there are very clear, I mean, they're not that clear. They're definitely, um, there are pretty clear signs in the first book that I just didn't pick up on because I, I don't know, closetedness, is that a reason? Oh my gosh, it's so hot in here. I can't have my AC on while I film. Next, All Systems Read by Martha Wells, which is a an adult sci-fi novella about Murderbot, who is a security unit who breaks his governor module and basically has free will. And the best part of these books is just Murderbot <laughs> in himself. He is hilarious. Actually, it's not he, it's it. I made that mistake. I listened to the audiobook and I thought it was a man's voice, so I use he pronouns, but Murderbot uses it pronouns. So it is so relatable. <laughs> it's constantly talking about how it just wants to, it doesn't want the humans to interact with it. It just wants to sit alone <laughs> and watch its soap operas, <laughs> like really dramatic space opera <laughs> junk. <laughs> and I just find that really relatable. Okay, next is, oh, I have this one. Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. This is one of few historical young adult fictions I've ever enjoyed. <laughs> it takes place in the 70s, 80s, 80s, I think, and follows Aristotle and Dante. This is a very quiet, contemporary feeling historical, and it's really, you know, self-discovery, and there's a lot about family in here, and I just really loved it. This is back when I still uh, an tried to annotate my books. I have three tabs in here, like, like I was doing a great job, but the writing is just so beautiful. There were a few lines I was like, lovely. Okay, next is, I don't have a copy of this one, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day by Judith Vorst. Vorst? This is a children's picture book. It was one of my favorites when I was young. I just thought it was funny. I, it's basically just about this kid who is having a really bad day. And it was one of the first books I read where someone was just allowed to be upset. Like you're just allowed to have shit days and that's, fine. Eventually, it'll get better. That's just how it is sometimes. I really like that. Okay, next is The Extraordinaries by T.J. Klune. This is a young adult sci-fi superhero kind of book. Another recent read and another one I love because the main character is so relatable. Nikki is a huge fucking nerd. He's obsessed with the superheroes in his town. He writes a long-running fan fiction for them featuring a very self-insert main character. <laughs> and... He has ADHD and I just love him and his friend group and they're just so fun to read about. Like, I just love Nikki. <laughs> Next is, okay, here's another embarrassing one. All right, I hope you guys are ready. Dark House by Karina Halley. And I'm afraid to read this one again because I know the writing isn't that great. I read this when I was going through a very intense paranormal romance phase and I got really obsessed with this whole series. It's seven books long and it follows this main character, Perry, and this guy, Declan, who are investigating like paranormal events for this YouTube show. It's, I mean, it scared the fuck out of me when I read it, but like the romance is not, like it's not a healthy romance by any means. Perry is super fucked up. She has a lot of problems and self-esteem issues. Declan is a huge asshole, but for some reason, I was just 
obsessed with them. So that's why this book is on this list. I'm pretty sure this is signed. It says Dairy Forever. That's their ship name. Declan and Perry. Maybe I should reread it. I'll Maybe I'll reread it and vlog it so I can make fun of myself for loving it so much. Okay, next is The Abyss Surrounds Us by Emily Skrotsky. This is a young adult dystopian sci-fi. Really, I love this book for the the relationship. I mean, it's a good book generally, but there's a female-female romance, one of the first female-female romances I ever read, ever, <laughs> and I just love them together. And I read an interview with the author talking about how Swift, who is the love interest in this book, was written based on all of the uh, mysterious bad boy main characters of YA, only choose a woman, and I loved her. <laughs> so. I really love them together. There's a lot of, uh, <laughs> it's a very violent relationship. Like they're constantly threatening to hurt each other. I don't know, it was a good time. Okay, next is Perfect Rhythm by Jay. This is an adult romance. It's like a small town rock star comes home to take care of an ailing father. The love interest is a nurse. It's like a super traditional romance setup, but female, female. Both characters are lesbians and one of them is asexual and I thought the rub in this was amazing and the romance was very sweet. I love the small town feel. <sighs> What's the word? What's the word? It's very like wish fulfillment a little bit but I really liked it. Also this book had a trigger warning before the chapter with the sex scene and super appreciate that for the ace readers out there. All right next is The Perfect Assassin by K.A. Dorr. This is an adult fantasy set in like a desert town where our main character, who is just finishing up his assassin school, <laughs> has to hunt down someone who is murdering people in this city. So this story is just really interesting. The world building is really interesting. The characters are great. This main character, Amistan, I love him. And he is a terrible assassin. <laughs> like he is way too sweet for this job. He is ace and gay and he is way too much of a cinnamon roll to be an assassin. I'm sorry, he is. But this book is just great. I have the last two books in the series. I just haven't gotten to them yet. Obviously I was very intrigued by this one because of the ace main character. I think this is one of the first or really one of the only um, adult fantasies I've read with an ace main character. I've read some with ace side characters or um, multi-perspective books with ace characters but this is one of the you know, special. So eight more, eight more. All right. God, it is hot in here. Whew. Okay, next is The Nightmare Verse by L.L. McKinney. So Blades of Black and A Dream So Dark are the only books that are out yet. The last book comes out next year and I read these for some reason because I hate myself and now I have to wait for the third one. Anyways, this is sort of an Alice in Wonderland meets Buffy retelling and I adored it. I love these books because, well frankly, they're one of the first retellings I've really loved. I almost never like them and I just really like Alice and I love... <laughs> Alice is a nerd and she loves Sailor Moon and she does Sailor Moon cosplay in this. I love Sailor Moon. So I love that nerd rep happening. Also Alice is cool and I want her to be my friend. Next is The Lady from the Black Lagoon, Hollywood Monsters and the Lost Legacy of Millicent Patrick by Mallory O'Meara. This is nonfiction biography of Millicent Patrick, um, who was an artist and costume designer in the mid, early to mid 1900s, but she rarely gets credit for her work. So Mallory O'Meara did a ton of research looking for evidence of Millicent Patrick's participation in these films. Um, the whole story is really fascinating. It tells, it's sort of like a dual story because we're, goddamn gnats, we're learning about Millicent Patrick at the same time as Mallory O'Meara and Mallory O'Meara works in the film industry. So it's really interesting to see how the film industry has changed for women and how it's still the same and the like parallels between their two stories. I just really liked this. It's one of the nonfiction books I always recommend to people that are just getting into it because it's such a fun story and like it's such fascinating history but you're also getting sort of a current autobiography at the same time. 
Also, Mallory O'Mara is just like super cool and I follow her on Twitter and like, I just wanna be her. <sighs> She's writing another book right now about w women drinking. It's girls who drink, women, women who drink or something like that. And it's about the history of women and alcohol. I will definitely read it. Okay, we're getting off topic. Next is The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon by Stephen King. This is a novella by Stephen King and it's probably my favorite Stephen King work. I've been having bad luck rereading Stephen King lately, like it just doesn't have the charm it did when I was a child. <laughs> but this one, I'm pretty sure I would still like. And it's just about a girl who gets lost in the woods while she's on a hike with her family and a bunch of horrifying stuff ensues that you're not sure if it's real or if it's in the imagination of this 12 year old. And I read this book in like two hours. I got it at the library with my family and we drove home. I started reading it in the car and then I just stayed in the car <laughs> until I finished it. It's just one of those that I find really memorable. Okay, next is You're Never Weird on the Internet Almost by Felicia Day. Goddamn gnats. <laughs> this is a nonfiction book. It's a, it's a autobiography. It's a memoir of Felicia Day who is, I don't know, she does a bunch of nerdy stuff. So she, one of the first things she did that got her really noticed was this YouTube miniseries called, fuck, I can't remember, but it's about <laughs> a gaming group and like the interactions between all of them. It's fucking hilarious, definitely look it up. But Felicia Day was also in Supernatural for a time. She runs a podcast and she was on a YouTube channel for a really long time. She just like has, she, she has her fingers in a bunch of nerd shit over a long period of time. I listened to the audiobook of this and it was hilarious. She reads it herself. I definitely recommend that. But I also got a physical copy of this because I met Felicia Day. Okay, hopefully that angle hasn't changed too much. My camera said it was full and then I had to delete some stuff. So, what the fuck was I just talking about? Um, okay, we have three more. Next is The Fever Wake Duology by Victoria Lee, which is a young adult sci-fi series, dystopian. <sighs> What is the best part about these books? I think the best parts are the themes and how well she handles such serious topics in such an engaging and interesting futuristic world because they're very, I mean, they're topics that could be addressed in any kind of book, uh, but is usually addressed in contemporary. And I think she did an amazing job. Topics like um, uh, childhood sexual assault and grooming and addiction and I just think she did an amazing job. Also, there's a romance between Gnome and Dara, and Gnome is bisexual, and I love to see good bisexual characters, especially in young adult books. It's hard to find them sometimes, but Gnome is great. Okay, next is, God damn it, did I miss something? I'm, I missed stuff. Oh, I have these in a specific order. <sighs> well, I guess we'll skip back. Sawkill Girls by Claire Legrand. This is a young adult fantasy set on islands. Girls are disappearing. These three girls have to team up together and figure out what the fuck is going on. It's friendship, it's feminist, it's, there's a main character that's Ace, of course. And I just really adored this book. It's creepy. It's, it's definitely like a fantasy horror almost. And I think it did that aspect really well. It has a very haunting atmosphere. I just recommend this to everyone. My stack is getting, can you see it? A little out of control there. All right. Oh, I forgot a different one. When did I miss this? When <laughs> did I miss this? I think I forgot to put it on the list, which means I'm going to have 31 books unless I skip one of these. Which one do I want to skip? All right, I've decided. Next, we have the Shades of Magic series. How did I forget this? I'm going to have to count again. God. <sighs> Shades of Magic series by V.E. Schwab. I'm just a diehard Schwab fan. Um, <laughs> This series is three books long. It's a portal fantasy about four Londons and you can travel between each of the worlds. My favorite character is Lila. I know that's controversial. Some people really hate her because misogyny. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> she is unlikable. That's kind of the point. Um, she's very arrogant. She really does not give a fuck about what anyone tells her to do, but I love that about her. Um, <laughs> And I love the romance between her and Kel. I just really like their dynamic as characters. It's one of my favorite ship dynamics where you have like a wild impulsive kind of angry character and then a very sensible level-headed character. Ooh. Okay. Okay, last. Maybe I'm gonna count again. 
Darius the Great is not okay and Darius the Great deserves better. I actually finished Darius the Great deserves better yesterday and it really like solidified the series as one of my favorites. I just love Darius and I love the way Adib Karam writes about depression and medication because it's so sensible and he leaves room for, for so many different experiences with the same illness because Darius and his dad suffer from depression and they experience it and show it and treat it in different ways. So I like that he leaves room for that. I also, this is a very family focused story and I love the way Darius thinks about his family and his extended family. In the first book, he goes to visit his parents and Iran, grandparents in Iran. And in the second book, he, he spends more time with his dad's parents in Portland. And the difference between those two and how he thinks about them in his own mind, I just love it. And Darius needs a hug, but don't worry, he gets them. Also, I love his sister and how protective Darius is of her. All right, all right, okay, I'm done. Good Lord. Okay, I'm gonna count real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 27, 28, 29. Okay, I need one more. All right, I'm gonna be basic bitch and go with The Hunger Games <laughs> by Suzanne Collins. This is one of few young adult books I actually read when I was a teenager. At that point, I was super into adult and I didn't really read YA until I was in my 20s. But The Hunger Games really got me and my brother was super into it too, so we talked about it a lot and like I, I have very fond memories of that. And I mean, the books are just, I just really like them. <laughs> And I liked Katniss as a main character. And I really liked, this is one of the first books I read where one of the main guy characters, the main male love interest was not super masculine. Peta is, you know, gentle and sensitive <laughs> for the most part. And I just really liked that. Okay, that's 30 books. Damn it, I'm really trying to stop doing the finger guns. I'm gonna do it at work one day and embarrass the fuck out of myself. Okay, so if any of my 30 books, these aren't favorites though, I wanna say that right now because chances are I forgot something that's my favorite. I'm really intimidated by the prospect of making a favorite books video. It's just too much. Like I can't take the, the pressure. <laughs> okay, plus it would be like 50 books long. It would be outrageous. Okay, I'm actually done this time. I post work-related videos every Wednesday, so if you wanna see more, subscribe. If you wanna keep talking, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram at Kelsey Reads or Goodreads at Kelsey Lynn Reads. If you like this video, hit like. Otherwise, I'll see you next week.